Welcome back, everyone. Amid the rising cost of food items in Nigeria, the federal government is striving to spread its interventions across the board. As such, the federal government announced a 50% increase in the feeding allowance of inmates in Nigerian correctional centers, effective from August. A spokesperson of the Nigeria Correctional Service, Abubaka Omar, said the increase is a first phase of comprehensive reforms targeted at improving the welfare of people in correctional facilities. Omar also noted that this review will not be the last, as the government hopes to ensure more interventions in line with new market realities. The government has actually reviewed the feeding allowance of inmates in our custody with 50%. And this is just the first phase of the review. The government is also looking at uh, the next phase where they will actually uh, improve the allowance of inmates. Thank you. When you saw this report, how did you process it? Yeah, I knew straight away that uh, uh, the announcement must have been prompted by the viral video of inmates at uh, Calabar prison who are complaining about the feeding pattern and the low quality of uh, food that uh, they are sold. Of course, um, Umar uh, said no, that it had nothing to do with the viral video. So the question people will ask is, why did the announcement come after um, that video went viral? So, I mean, if you have um, good steps to take in terms of welfare of uh, inmates, you shouldn't wait until inmates protest, until inmates riot, until um, um, a video went viral talking about the, the way they are fed, how poorly they are fed and all that before you do the right thing. It's a good thing to increase it, increase uh, their feeding allowance, you know, even at 50% of what they are what um, each inmate is entitled to. I don't even think that is good enough because things have really gone bad and um, inflation has really, really made things extremely costly. But I think that beyond even their feeding, they have to look at the terrible condition in which um, these inmates are kept. There is a prison that I went to. I don't want to mention that prison, but some of the inmates who are sleeping on beer bunk, no, no mattress. Some had um, um, cartons. They just spread cartons on the the bed so that they do not sleep directly on the on the iron, uh, on the springs. So the condition of those prisons have to get better. The minister has, has talked about the fact that they plan to build new prisons, mm -hmm. especially prisons too close to where people live. Those prisons have to be relocated and more than once built elsewhere. When, when, when uh, some inmates escaped in Kuje, because it's close to where people live, they easily meshed with people, and that was it. The same thing happened in Suleja. Some of those prisons are so close to um, uh, homes of uh, Nigerians that once they escape, they, they, within 10 meters, they are in, inside someone's house. So it's difficult uh, to, to, to track them down. So prisons are not meant to be located too close to where the rest of us live. Look at the Koyi prison, for example. It's one prison that they need to, I'm sorry I'm calling them prison, I'm still used to calling them prison. <laughs> it's one prison that I believe needs to be located. And of course, the matter of congestion. 
we can't have a situation in which the bulk of the people in the prisons are awaiting trial. In fact, when I was looking at the, the figures, um, 7, we have, let me see, okay, there are, eight, there are 84,741 persons in our prisons. 82,521 of them are male, 1,920 are female. That's as of September 3rd. Our waiting trial is 57,750 out of 82,000. 57,000 are waiting trial. So if we can uh, expedite uh, the trial of people, it will be better for everyone. The prisons are already congested. We are where you need to keep three persons, we are keeping like seven persons. So the prisons are congested. I, 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 the point I'm making is we shouldn't just deal with the matter of their feeding. Other things also need to uh, be borne in mind. And then, of course, um, people on death row, more than 3,000 people on death row, we are since, since 2016 in a do state when Oshomole was governor, nobody has been executed. And you keep uh, uh, passing death sentence on people, but governors are refusing to sign. Sorry. So, which is also worsening the, um, the matter of congestion that we are talking about. 3,517 people are waiting execution as we speak. Governors are not signed. Oshomole was the last governor to sign in 2016, almost uh, 10 years uh, later. No, so uh, there's a lot uh, that needs to be done, and I hope the minister and his team will, will, will sit up right. and try to make those uh, custodial centers better. All right, Mayor, uh, BQ has expanded this conversation. Beyond the issue of feeding, there is the issue of prison congestion, prison renovation. When do we stop planning? When do we start executing these plans? I think the problem has to do with funds, okay. maybe because... Um, of our now they've changed the name to correctional center but maybe because of our perception of what prison should be the our nigerian prisons are underfunded so there's not enough money to do the normal things there apart from that there is high level of corruption mm -hmm. in fact one of the biggest scam in our prisons is the collusion between the food contractors and the prison officials even with the money that is being voted now, as low as it used to be, majority of that food don't get to the prisoners because the contractor will supply some, some um, prison officials, will take their own, the cost. guy will have handed them. By the time they hand over the food, it's nothing. If you see the food in Nigerian prison, because okay, like at least I can say that of maximum secure prison, which is the number one prison in Nigeria. It is even better funded than most prisons in Nigeria. But when you get there, you will notice that the food is so poor that anybody that is an elite cannot even eat the food. Yeah. That is why, one of the, one, again, one of the easiest ways of making money in Nigerian prisons is self-feeding. You know, you apply to the controller of prisons to, to say you want to self-feed. So your family will bring food for you from home. Yeah. It's, a, it's a real privilege that you have to pay highly for. And then you can now go, they will bring the food. And sometimes people take food to them like that on a daily basis. Because you can't touch, you can't touch the food. In fact, the prisoners themselves, they call it washing belly. Mm. Because it's, the, the soup is watery. And it's, it's, it's ridiculous when, when you see what is happening there. And then for what BK was said, when you look at the, pres the cells themselves, because like I said, because they were on the front, there are too many people in those cells. You will see, if you look at the condition of the so-called awaiting trial people, it's amazing. Somebody that has not been convicted is just that uh, asked, the person was asked to be remanded so that maybe the guy could not perfect the bail conditions and all that. You can see up to about 60 people in a cell. Sometimes they don't even get to sleep. They just hang on each other and all that. So again, in the prisons, for you to even have something that is, that is, that is a human, you have to pay for it. In every prison, especially all those top prisons, they have a block that is a VIP block. In the VIP block, you have beds, you, can, you have access to, um, to a fridge, 
they will ask access to your own food and, and provisions and all that. But that shouldn't be because only very few people, especially people who are involved in corruption or they will find guilty of stealing money or something, is the same set of people that will be able to afford comfort within the Nigerian prison system. But the, rank, the, the, majority, the average Nigerian who finds himself in a correctional center lives below human level mm. because there is not enough money to even provide the basic things there. there every, every prison has what they call a centers, like a clinic. But the clinic is, there's nothing there. So when, you, when you're sick and you get to the clinic, the clinic will just refer you to the hospital because there's nothing there. All right, you've, 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 you've raised two major issues now, or challenges, uh, poor funding and um, uh, corruption. The Minister of Interior is like, uh, is seen as a star boy of this administration. Where does he start from? Yeah, he has to work on that. You see, it takes time for that to be, because you see, in the Nigerian prison, it's a trash. It's just like what is happening in the Nigerian police. And an inspector general of police will come and he will read the riot out and he will talk about corruption and every day there is corruption. You know, it is, an, it is entrenched. It's the system. It takes time to change the system. But I believe that, yes, it's a star boy. has done very well. It's one minister that I have so much respect for. And the advice that I would give to him is that, number one, they have to increase the funding in the Nigerian prison. They have to look at the condition of service of warders. You see, because most of them, unlike police and other military arm of thing, they hardly get promoted. And a lot of the warders are frustrated. They are frustrated. They, they work for so many years without promotion. So there's tendency for them to be corrupt. There's tendency for them to be corrupt because they are poorly paid. Apart from being poorly paid, the, the, the system itself, there's not enough money there. So they depend on getting money from prisoners to be able to get by. And it's so okay. sad. So they have to increase funding. And then the way, look at the welfare of the, of the when you, brothers. When you look at, uh, take a look at prisoners, when they bring them to court, they are usually the skinniest people that you can find mm. because of uh, months and years of poor feeding. So they are usually very skinny. You know that they've not been properly looked after. That has to change. I'm happy that uh, within the prison system, they are also helping some people to acquire education. Yeah. Um, National Open University. In fact, uh, uh, about 282 mm -hmm. uh, prisoners now, or, or inmates now, are um, already back. They are, they are working on their degrees and, uh, their, and their masters and uh, six are working on their PhDs. It, sh it shows that mm -hmm. things can get better if we apply ourselves fully to it, but there is still well, a Vicky, lot. this matter of funding, can government do it alone? Um, even now, you know, they are trying to get the private sector involved. For example, the private sector helped them to pay the bail bonds of some of the inmates who yeah. had been um, kept in prison because they could not uh, uh, afford to uh, uh, bail themselves out. Mm -hmm. So the private sector got involved and thousands of them, thousands, regained their freedom. Because for some of these people, some were um, even arrested for very minor offenses mm -hmm. and they can be there for years. Mm -hmm. For example, one day you get arrested maybe on the day when they are doing uh, environmental sanitation, you are arresting, you are arrested for loitering around and you stay in prison for years. It happens. Because sometimes when they're supposed to bring you to, to court, they will say maybe the, the Black Maria was faulty and all that. So all right. these things, <laughs> um, there is a lot that they have to deal with. And those prisons have to be remodeled. Some of them were built almost 100 years ago. So you, you, we need new prisons. Right, I like the fact that Abio gave us a modern prison. Where Kabul Sokoto was kept. I don't know if it is still there, but we need to build more modern prisons so All that right. we can ditch those old um, prisons who are, that were built in the colonial era. All right. Thank you, gentlemen.